You know, I, <laughs> I've been asked that off. I am not 100% sure. I do believe, I know I helped uh, Harold in his 1977 campaign. Most people don't realize that when uh, Richard J. Daley died in December of 76, there was a special election. Um, and the black community was fairly upset at that time too because uh, tradition would make it seem that Wilson Frost, who was the president pro tem, should be next in line. But clearly the 11th Ward at that time and kind of the white power structure was not going to allow an African-American to become mayor. So they chose the 11th Ward um, uh, committeeman uh, Mike Belandic to be the choice for mayor. Uh, and anyway, Harold Washington decided to jump in there. That was kind of a statement. And it wasn't a real strong campaign, but he did win five uh, black wards. And my apartment up on Farwell in Rogers Park was a north side office. So I'm not 100% sure. I, I think it was because we were meeting about housing issues. H Harold was a, um, he was a policy guy. He really, is. if you start his career from early on, he cared about average people. He cared about people that were not were getting the short end of the stick by the system. And of course, one big area that was housing. And he knew I was a housing activist up on the north side. So I'm pretty sure that was the first meeting we talked about things that might be done for affordable housing. Um, and I think it was before I was alderman, but I was beginning to push for uh, a kind of tenant landlord bill of rights. Um, well, most of it was, um, how is Harold? Is he still alive? Okay. Uh, and I wasn't, I didn't know that until I got downtown. Okay. Then just, you know, lots of things. Remember, someone I really respected a lot and cared a lot about and cared about what I think was the right direction the city was moving in. Uh, finally, a progressive uh, approach to governing. Uh, so the, the sense of loss was very significant. Um, the loss of a great leader and potentially the loss of a movement. So all that was going through, and plus I had to deal with all this other stuff. In other words, now I was mayor. Um, I was very cognizant that uh, I wasn't that well known. You had this powerful, strong mayor, and all of a sudden there's this kind of little white guy that is, is the new mayor. So I tried to, everywhere I went, uh, whether speaking or at press conferences, to try and remain calm, cool, things are going to be okay. Uh, usually surround myself with African American leaders, which I think was important to show that uh, this is not a coup, this is not something where black Chicago. Uh, at least while I was around, was going to be endangered uh, by Harold's death. So it was a hotly political time. It was a very public time. There were thousands of people on the streets that came to see his body. We put his body out, I believe, on the Friday after Thanksgiving. Um, and people, uh, and all sorts of people. It wasn't just black Chicago. It was people from all over. I uh, stood in line um, for, for a long time. And, uh, and that continued for, for quite a while, while the body was open for the public to visit. So I'm a strong believer in democracy, and if you're going to bring about progressive change, which Harold was all about, you need to get people involved, okay? Because the system is always stacked to help the few, and that's what the old machine did. Uh, and so one of, it's remarkable in those years, from 83 to 87, before Harold passed, that there was so much activism, particularly in the black community. Not only did people vote, they paid attention. They got involved. People watching the news, when Harold used to say, everywhere he goes, what did you do today, Harold? And see, that was really constructive because you can't have a progressive government and you can't deal with the imbalance of power that almost always goes to the wealthy unless you get people engaged. That's what a real democracy is supposed to be about. And by having that kind of activism, okay, and it wasn't just talk, it was real. And uh, part of what Harold did is he, he made it clear that he listened to average people. He was a bottoms up mayor. He was one of the few in the entire country that said our development and our use of resources now are gonna be determined uh, throughout the neighborhoods, okay, and not just the continuous um, use of resources in the downtown area. Um, and he had a lot of successful policies around that. So the activism, the turning the corner racially, 
And even though he didn't get as many white votes as he would have liked, um, when you prove, okay, in this case, unfortunately, because of the racism in Chicago, that this African-American guy can run this city, and he showed that in debates in 83 because he outclassed both Daley and Byrne, uh, that is significant when a whole class of people, unfortunately, because of racial backgrounds, uh, might see someone as incapable or inferior. And while it was grudgingly, while it was tough, um, some of those same people that were probably out screaming and protesting in 83, they were marching by his body. Uh, and they may not have been wild about him, but uh, they showed that respect. Uh, ju just the, the fact that as mayor, he ushered in these uh, new ways of having fairness, meaning that there has to be a certain percentage of minority ownership in businesses. If, if the city's got $4 billion to give away, okay, in a particular year, well, a certain percentage of that should be going to women-owned firms, or African-American-owned firms, Latino-owned firms, because uh, in the old days, there was very little that ever kind of got down to that level. So again, the list is very long of accomplishments, but particularly the, the reforming the way politics were taking place, um, uh, harming the worst elements of the old machine, activating uh, people, getting to participate more, pretty significant legacy. Uh, if we had that today, things would be different. Absolutely. I mean, most of the people I deal with, particularly in the black community, uh, believe that was a, a crucial thing. In other words, perhaps Barack Obama would have never been president if not Harold Washington had been mayor. By having the incredible political support that he had and that he was so politically astute and so strong and powerful, I mean, he was a fighter. He was, uh, he was a really tough guy. Uh, and he could charm your socks off at the same time. So that movement, I think really had a lot to do with the willingness or just the opportunity for a young organizer named Barack Obama to have this kind of fair, uh, rapid rise, uh, partly because he, you know Barack was so talented, but a really rapid rise um, in the wild tumble democratic politics of Cook County and Illinois. So yes, I believe there's a, a direct relationship there. This was uh, in early 85, okay, after my first son was born, Jeffrey. And the, the story behind this, and I think what we were talking about at the time, I think it was the first time I was introducing you to Jeffrey, is that just uh, a couple weeks before this, okay, on uh, December 31st of 1984, Verdoliak was trying to, of course, harm the mayor by not passing his budget. Usually the budgets are passed by October, early November. But um, what Verdoliak wanted to do is to try and show that Harold couldn't govern by denying him the votes to get the budget passed. And I was there New Year's Eve while my wife was ready to go to the hospital. And I kept calling, Harold, I got to go. No, wait, 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 wait a little longer. We got to make sure we have the votes. And I don't remember the time, but sometime around 9.30 or 10, he called and said, hey, we got the votes, go. And I took off uh, and got there, and uh, my wife and I went directly to St. Francis Hospital, Evanston. And then lo and behold, even though I think she was really ready to deliver, they sent us home, I think because the nurses wanted to celebrate New Year's Eve. And two hours later, we came back, and our first son, Jeffrey, was born. Uh, but he was the first to arrive in 85, so we got a year's worth of diapers from St. Francis Hospital. And Harold got his budget.